Uh, welcome to the um, macro workshop uh, recap video. Timer started. Uh, this is the third workshop that I have hosted. I hosted a, uh, a mono slab uh, workshop uh, about two years ago, and then I did the uh, um, make an elevations pop uh, workshop about a year ago, and this is the third one I've done. This is nothing new. I think there are a lot of other people that do workshops, or some people. I think Tommy Blair uh, hosts one every every month, which is probably a great workshop for a lot of people who, anyway, a lot of people might want to go to that one. And then uh, uh, Dan Bauman has a couple. Uh, he has some free ones, and he has some that he charges for. And then, of course, uh, Chief has some that they're free and some he charges for. Anyway, I, I just do mine for free. It's too much trouble otherwise. Anyway, um, and after these workshops, I always try to think of, I want to do a recap to kind of uh, uh, ingrain in my little head what what I learned from it and I after I do all these workshops I uh, there's always uh, I always wonder is that all I learned on, in it but bottom line is I remember years ago when I was doing uh, some seminars with chief I always I always thought if I got just one thing out of it one one little nugget it, it made it worthwhile and I think uh, I think this was a pretty good workshop actually uh, and so um, what did I learn or what came out of this as far as I was concerned? I think uh, um, one thing that came out of it, I, I've got my layout on the left, uh, no, my layout's on the right and my plan's on the left. I think one thing that came out of it was uh, labels, labels for uh, um, everything. Joe says, uh, why don't we have label, labels for everything we use? Every, every object in chief has a label. And uh, with, with, and I use labels all the time. You know, I got electric meter here; it has a label to it. I have a gas meter here; it has a label to it. I don't have text boxes identifying what that is. I think we have labels for doors. We have labels for windows. We have labels for you know. F this is this is a label. And why are labels so important? Because if I take this and I copy it over here, the text box goes with it, and that's what's so neat. That's what's so great about labels. And and. Uh, you know, I, I, I use labels for my cabinets, the four drawer cabinet, here's a spice cabinet, 30 foot, and, and it's just a, a label. In, in fact, you know, when we had these, I think we had 10 or 15 people here, and uh, different levels of experience. In fact, some, somebody said, I de identify what a, what a macro is, and that's what this whole thing was about. He didn't even know what a macro was. Well, I, I did a, a, a pre-video on uh, uh, this workshop macros and so if, if you want to know what a macro is uh, you watch that video and it talks about it a little bit but anyway here here it is right here macro blah, 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 blah. and uh, I, I can I can put a macro in here uh, a, I don't know a, a, if I want to show the depth of this cabinet I can show the depth of the cabinet it's a new 30 inch gas cooktop that's 24 inches deep I guess I don't know that's one thing but but Joe took it a step further actually, and and Joe, what Joe said is he wants to go to layout. Here's here's my layout right here. If I go to sheet number two, and and I didn't get this at first, but he almost wants a label for the walls. He wants to be able to select a wall, and now I'm I've opened up my elevation, and he wants to be able to say, "Where's my elevation? Here it is." Uh, and I think there are other ways of. Uh, addressing this but here, here here's a wall I selected a wall he wants to be able to open up this wall and do you see a label on that wall no but Joe wants to have a label for that wall and and, and you say how would he use that label well he'd use that label the same way I use this text right here uh, you know I got some pre pre written out Texas control C control V and and there that that wall is it's an it's existing 70 inch stucco over blah 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 well, I think Joe was saying, well, let's just go ahead and give it, give it a label. So if I open this up, and I, there should be a tab here that says label. That's what Joe's thinking. Look at these labels. I used a la existing vent. That's a label. Label. Existing shells. I just stuck that out there. Remember that one? Existing vent. So labels are all about not having to use text boxes. Here's a text box here. And uh, I, I suppose I, I, I'm going to get into... One of the big things, I learned a couple things with Perry, and, and I'm going to get into that later, but I want to get into, I'm going to be a little bit more specific here. So th that that was the big thing. That was one of the big things is labels. Labels for everything. That's what, oh, oh, oh what is this right here? I, in fact, this is a spark. In fact, look at this. You, label. Oh. Uh, uh, you know, existing, um, existing, um, Spark arrestor. 
Oh, I, I don't know why I don't, I don't use that label for that thing. There. What, what am I doing? What am I doing this? Why am I calling out? Why do I have this stupid text box right here? Oh, control Z. And this is one of the things that came out with X5 or X4. One of the things is, is uh, uh, Chief gave us the ability to give something a label. Where is it? Come on, come on, come on. There it is. And so I, I really want to turn this label on, uh, turn that label on. This is kind of cool. Oh, fix your labels. It's on. So where is it? Where's that label? Come on, Scott. Come on, come on. Figure it out, you big ninny. Oh, control Z. You know, I, I've got a text block calling out for an existing spark arrestor. But I, I already have labels for it, so why aren't, why aren't I using it? I don't know. I hadn't thought about it, I guess. Here it is. Uh, existing spark or Why am I stopping? Why is it stopping right there? Check that out. Why can't I move that label up and down? Oh, there it is. I moved it up and down. Okay. Oh, th that's so cool. I just used an existing sp uh, uh, spark. Where's my label? Where's my fucking? Where's my label? It's on fixture. Where is it? Where is it? Maybe that's why I don't use it because it doesn't work. Isn't that weird? There's and and, and here. Well, it didn't work. <laughs> Maybe that's why I don't use it. But this is a text box, but I guess I'd rather use a label. I think labels are just as good. Existing spark arrestor right there. And what Chief's done is he's they made it really kind of neat that I could just spin this thing. Why can't why isn't this thing showing? I, I don't want to I don't want to existing spark arrestor. Now here's here's something else that I'd like to see. I I'd like to see these labels having arrows if I want. If I want an arrow for that existing spark arrestor, I just I'd like to have an arrow for it. Anyway, labels for a lot of things. That, that that's that's the key. Uh, uh, what, what about this post right here? I mean, uh, you. I could I could put a text block look uh, using it, but why don't I have a label box here? Uh, maybe I don't need one. I, I don't know. But it just seems labels are really cool. It's something that Chiefs Chiefs done. I, I and I can't wait to get into t Perry stuff that I really learned from him. So I, right now, what, what I'm doing right now is I'm talking about some of the things that we uh, learned, learned, and uh, or discussed. Here's a really big thing. Okay, so we're talking about labels, and now this is a this is one of the big things that that uh, I am a real advocate of, of. I think, and that is if I go to my site plan, Control W, I'm going to close my plan. I'm going to go to my layout, and I'm going to select my uh, uh, sheet number one. I'm going to select my site plan, and this is really, really, really important. And I think this is very, very important for a lot of people. And that is, this is my existing floor, existing house, and this is my existing garage. If I open my existing, it's, it's a piece, it's a closed piece sign, p, p line. It, it identifies the size of my, it identifies the size of the garage. I want a label up here. I want a label up here that tells me how how, how big that thing is. Because right now, what I do is I have to come in here and I have to you and I have to select this thing and I have to say I have to say it's 470 square feet. Well, I just as soon have a label that if I decided to change the size of this garage, whether whether it's new or existing or whatever, I, I just I'd like I like to, I'd like that number 470 square feet to be updated. Now, about a, two years ago, I was working on a very complicated project that I needed floor area ratio and coverage figured out and new new floors, existing floors, and blah blah blah. blah. And I had I had all those numbers automatically being uh, converted into this uh, area analysis box right here. And the problem with that is I was using a reference arrow to identify a certain thing. It was a mess. It didn't work for me. Now Jerry, if you if you've been following this, Jerry came up with an, a system to use roof planes or ceiling planes, which do have labels, which you can then take that information and the area of that thing and, and put it into a bunch of boxes. What Chief is so great about, or, or what what this all is, is is all about is all about is things being updated automatically. And I think that that is really, and you listen to Doug Park, and he's talking about that's what he, that's what his goal is, man. Doug's trying to make all this stuff automatic, and and this is how I would use this. This is how I would use this thing. Here's the layout right here. Now, if I had, <coughs> sorry, 
if I was able to identify the square footage of this existing house and the existing area, oh, time up, Jesus Christ. I thought I was, didn't have anything to talk about. And if I was able to identify the area of this existing garage, where do those numbers go to? Once I identify that area, where do those numbers go to? Well, they would go right here, 1955 square foot. That's automatic. I type 1955 in. But if I change this thing, it's still going to be 1955. If I change the shape of this, it's still 1955. But I want it to be automatic. So if I change the shape of it, it's now 1960 or so. If I change the size of the garage, it's now four. Uh, instead of 470, it's 490. Automatically update, update it. Where else? Where else does that number go? And that's what's so powerful about macros. I have this area analysis. It's a, a CAD block, and this information here, 1955, 470, 143, 457. I put those in myself. So if I change the size of something, I have to then come back into this area area analysis, and I, and I, and I have to change those numbers. Not only do, that, do I have to change those numbers, but now I have to come up here to the floor area ratio, and this number, I have to change that number because that's changed. And then I have to recalculate this percentage of the floor area ratio. So back to the whole point of this, and this is, and, and, and the point is being able to have labels for everything. I mean, I get labels for cabinets, I get labels for doors, I get labels for windows, but I'd like to have labels for um, uh, closed P lines. Maybe I want maybe I want labels for moldings. I don't know. I don't know how to use it yet, but I probably could. Hey, someone asked about what is what is a macro. This is a macro. If I have to put my name and my address in there, I don't have to type it in anywhere. If I ch if I move this, my address changes everywhere everywhere in the plan that's what 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 this is all about if i don't ever have to put put in the uh, client's name anymore or their address it's just automatically i change it in one place and it changes everywhere uh you know what what's neat about this is this is a uh, cad uh, cad detail and i like to put this area analysis on my site plan I also like to put it on my floor plan, and I also like to put it on my my demo plan, my floor plan. Then I like to, uh, then I, I put it on my cabinet plan, whatever for whatever reason. And you know, I get carried away. I, I get I go o o overboard actually. Uh, so, but here's some. You know, here's my section. Stop. I'll, I'll get back into that in a little bit. So, um, what, what are we talking about? We're talking about labels for just about everything. Why don't we have labels for everything? I think it'd be very very valuable. Oh, here's another thing that we talked about, and that uh, labels. And uh, when we talked about this at the meeting, you know, I was saying, "Well, this is new stuff to me." Well, it's not new stuff to me. I mean, I, I, I'm doing this. I just didn't put two, two, two and two together and figure out what it is. And what it is is, it's right here. Uh, I have a garage right here, right? And this garage is you. It's it's defined as it's defined as a garage. And right now, I see this pink stuff. See that pink stuff? That's all macro stuff. And if I want to come over to you and I want to go to, uh, uh, how do I do this? Oh, wait, select the label. Here, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get to my point in a second. You. Oh, hang on a second. How do I do this? Uh, I, 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 I'll say, I'll say, oh, stop. Hey, I, I'm going to go on. I, end of part one, I'll go to part two in a second. End of part one.